Hey, Wolfpack. Uh, I just saw somebody say, I'll bet you she's not going to be live because you're hosting with Blaine on the Hoop Fest. Well, guess what? I have a little break, so I had to pop in and say hi. A couple things. I'm going to tell you about a new event coming in 2022 that I have agreed to go to, and you are not going to want to miss it. So I have that coming. And the, what about the Chloe Trench? I thought we'd sew the pockets and the little wrist straps because those are pretty quick. And somebody asked me for tips on that. So we're going to do a little bit of the Chloe Trench, talk about these events, and then I got to hop back over to Hoop Fest. So how many of you have actually been watching Hoop Fest? It's fantastic. Cindy was just on there. The education is amazing. So Cindy's on there. I think this afternoon uh, you'll have Julie Fafan Balzer from Brother, and she is going to be talking about the scan and cut. So the deals are crazy. That's all I got to say. And it's really a lot of fun. Even yesterday, I wasn't working the show and I still binge watch it. So um, I know many of you are still over there. So I didn't want I don't want to take too much time away from that. So uh, and those of you that forgot, I wanted to remind you about it. So hey, Trisha, great to see you all. Terry. Okay, so first of all, I mentioned this to the Fashion Sewing Club just briefly yesterday, and now I can share. There is a new event coming in January, and I'm going to bring my screen up here. It's called the International Sewing Arts Festival. So it is located in Ontario, not Canada, but California. So uh, the dates are actually right before another quilting show, but this one is going to focus on garment sewing and everything that we love to do. Fashion Sewing Club would love it, right? So I can give you a few little tips about it. Let me share my screen so you can see the event here. I always like to share things with you first. I had to get a little preview here. I just found out, by the way, that the brother dealer that will be supplying machines for this place is supplying the Luminaire XP2. So I'm going to create my classes around that awesome machine. So there are space will be limited, of course, in these classes. So when it does go live, I'll let you know first. And hopefully you can all, the Wolf Pack will fill the room and it'll be like a big old party, right? So here it is. It, here's the event. There's no other details there right now as far as instructors, things like that. So I am the first to be able to share this with you. This is going to be very exciting. I believe the convention center is attached to the airport. So supposedly travel. <laughs> well, travel is never easy anymore, but supposedly it'll be easy. So those of you that live in California, mark those dates down. It could be a lot of fun. It sounds like they're going to have an open floor, classes, and I can give you a little hint. I have a big fashion show coming. So if you missed the one in Puyallup a couple years ago, this one's going to be even bigger and better. So you, I don't can't give you any other details of that. That's all I can tell you. But mark your calendar, January 13th through 15th in California. So all my little California friends, I'm going to be very excited to see you. All right. So do you want to learn how to do the pocket real quick? And for those of you that have never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. Your neighbor might be sewing next to you or fishing. I'm wearing my embroidery today to make sure that I was like uh, ready for Coop Fest, right? <laughs> Definitely. All right, so let's go sew a few of these. And if you have questions or comments, I'll be sure to pop in over here and answer those soon because I can't quite see them from all the way back there. All right, so let me bring you over to the table. Sure this is just a little bit lighter so you can see this. All right, so the, the straps, that's what I want to sew first. There you go. I'm making sure my volumes are all on. One moment. All right, sewing so machines up, tables up. Let's go and check that out. You can hear my tennis shoes, my squeaky tennis shoes. You know, we're still in Zoom clothes. Super cute top and leggings. Okay, so let's talk about the wrist straps. So these are the straps that are going to go around the wrist like this on the jacket and close, right? So you can either do it with two layers of your outside shell fabric or, you know me, I like to have a little extra in there. So if I put these together, how can you sew this? and make sure that this point is gonna be even on both. So this is what I do. I'm gonna just lay this flat. 
Hopefully my cutting's a little bit straighter than last time. So what I'm doing is I put a line parallel to the sides and now a line that goes straight across here. So what this does is when I start sewing, as I, when my needle gets to this point and this point and this point, that's when we turn and rotate. So let's go sew that. Speaking of Brother Luminaire, that's what I'm on today. As you all know, I'm a Brother Brand Ambassador. I have to put that for full disclosure. Okay, sewing. This is just, um, I'm going to use just the edge of the foot. Not even that. It's like a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So maybe I'll use my laser light for this one. I think you'll be able to see that. I've got the grid. I don't want the grid. I would just like a straight old line. I can see the line way over here. I don't want that way over there. Let's see if I can move this even more. Can you all see that red light moving? It was way, I must have been working on a project that was way over there. I don't know which color. Oh, you can see the white way better. So I just want about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to put this down. That lines up just about perfectly. And I'll just use that laser light as a guide right on the edge of my fabric. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can either start at the tip and sew down, but I'm just going to start at the one end, sew all the way down, and show you what those chalk marks really mean. That laser light makes it so easy to keep my fabric right on the edge. Let's see, does, how does that look? Right there. I'm right in there. Can you see? I'll bring you in a little closer. Right on the chalk mark. Now let's turn. Now when I put that down, it looks like I might need to move it over just a little bit more. It's like just a speck. It's not even a full stitch though. So I'm just gonna lift this up and make sure it's right on that chalk mark. There we go. And when you do something like that, make sure your needle's all the way down. Otherwise, when you go to turn and you go to stitch, that stitch will, that stitch will skip. Say that fast, skip stitch. <laughs> Don't worry, I had to do the Susie the Susie, oh gosh, my nephews had me doing all of those tongue twisters all weekend. Seashell Susie. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. And it, as you can see, I stopped right on the point. And again, my laser light looks great. And I'll just give you an example. Let's just say you stopped here, way before that chalk mark. And then I go to turn. Well, I can clearly see that I did not go for it far enough because I can see my laser light there. Now, if you don't have a laser light, you just have to make sure that you get right on that chalk mark. But I know many of you do, even on the older machines, we've got that laser light now. Just a little bit further. And I am a super, super <laughs> stickler for this to try to get it exactly right because if you don't, your tips are going to be crooked. Now, who in the world is going to see both of your wrists at the same time? Probably nobody. But we'll leave it at that. So because I'm doing such a narrow seam allowance, my strap's going to be a little wider. It's actually going to be a little wider than the pattern. And I don't have to trim it when I turn it right side out. Hey, Arnell, I just saw you on Hoop Fest. <laughs> I didn't mean to take you away from the party over there. All right, so here you go. And if you look closely, you can see both of my tips. Let's bring it really close. See those? Right on the edge, right on the edge, 
right on the point. And so now if I do that to both of them, when I flip it right side out, they're going to look perfect. Okay, so that's one. Now let's go, what about the pocket? Before I go there, I'm making sure you don't have any questions. I know. Okay. <laughs> Arnell, I really need. Oh, Arnell, Hoop Fest is on break? Oh, thanks. Well, I'm actually, I have to be back there in like 30 minutes. So this, you guys are my bathroom break, which is really frightening, right? <laughs> hey, Susan, great to see you. Oh, Sharon is in Vegas. Now that sounds fun. That sounds a lot of fun. That's it. That's it. She sells seashells by the seashore. I had to do that one. I had to do woodchuck. How much wood does a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Oh my gosh, they had me so busy, but we had a lot of fun. <laughs> you all got it. <laughs> yes, you did. Okay, so let's go sew the pocket. Okay, I told you it's gonna be a little shorter show today, but so let's keep rolling. See you, see you over there. Okay, so for the pocket, you have one piece. This is the wrong side. Still have little hairs on this one from my last project. And then here is the lining. And the lining is cut a lot smaller. So with right sides together, let me stitch this. I'm going to stitch across here. And then I'm gonna bring this up and stitch across here. So first here and then here. But when I stitch on this upper piece, I'm gonna leave a little opening. So let's go to the sewing machine. Actually, you know what? I have a little problem with this pocket. You know what it is? You know me, I have to do a fashion hack. I think I would prefer to have rounded corners yeah i know why now just because so let me grab this and let's see to do this i'll start with this side because you'll see it better so to make sure your corners are the same first i'm going to mark up let's go in two inches and up two inches Now I'm eyeballing this with my monster scissors. That looks pretty good. And how do you make them even? Well, you do the best you can. I usually fold this over and I will match this up. How does that look? Perfect. All right. Now, like that never happened, now I'm going to stitch. Let's see. I've changed my mind. Now that there's a curve, I'm going to stitch across the top here and leave a little opening. All right. This is just a little trick. It works really well. So I'll bring you to the sewing machine. Can you all keep me on track? I only have about five more minutes and I gotta get back to the hoop fest and you have to join me if you are, if you love embroidery, you won't wanna miss it. Okay, so now I'll just use, I'm gonna use a little bit wider seam allowance for this. Okay. And I like to just change it to a basting stitch to keep my, just to make sure that both of these layers are equal. So I'm gonna change it to a basting stitch. 
and back to a straight stitch. I'm using just a 2.5 stitch for this. Okay, so what do we have here? This little opening I will open, but first I need to press this. So hold that thought. I'm not taking you to the iron with me, but I'm just pressing it real quick. You'll just have to hear about it. I'm pressing using the Taylor's clapper to make sure there's a nice crease. And then I'll bring it back over there and show you what I did. Okay. So we're just going to pretend that you are at the ironing board with me. So what I did is I pressed open. I pressed this section here. Make sure you're, why is my camera turning? <laughs> it wants to be someplace else. <laughs> okay, so I stitched that and pressed this going that way. Then with wrong sides together, I pressed. Now I did give it a little crease here, but that's okay because we're gonna be pressing it. I'll be opening this little hole. But how, if the lining's so much smaller, how are you gonna get around that and make it look nice? So now because I have that section closed, I'm gonna stitch from here all the way around. Bring it back to the sewing machine. If, <laughs> if the camera decides to stay there, my camera's like, I want to go back to hoop fest. <laughs> okay. It's hard to go around the curves with that laser light, so I'm just lining it up with my foot, the edge of my foot. Pretty easy, right? I'm going to give it a quick pressing. I'll meet you right back here. Okay, let's go back to the table. And we're almost finished. Okay, so where you had your basting stitch, you can easily see that stitch that can be ripped out. And turn it right side out. I usually start with the corners. You don't, no need to clip these. And go to the other corner. It's like a little oven mitt, right? <laughs> So I can see a few little wrinkles here. I'm gonna go back and trim. I'll use my pinking shears along this section here. Let me just grab those. Now I have about six pairs of pinking shears and I haven't used these in so long. I have no idea which pair is the sharp pair, but we'll just try. And why do you do that? Well, because you can also just put little snips, that's fine. But if you do that around the corners, then when you go to turn this in, those little snips in there really make a big difference. You could also just do little snips with your scissors. Like for example, just say, do little snips, you snip right up to that seam line, but not through. That's another way to do it, okay? I'll just, since I have these here, I'll just do this. I'm gonna have to say these are a, one of the not new pairs. <laughs> I need to call Jeff. Okay. 
Okay. And now I can just hand stitch this in place right here. Or from the right side, I'll do some top stitching and that will close it as well. But I'm going to give it a nice pressing. You have to like make sure that all these edges are pressed out. Do a few rows of top stitching through here and your pocket is ready to attach. And you can attach it either just by doing a nice top stitching. You could do a blanket stitch. Uh, we'll be doing that next week since this week has to be a little shorter. So your job is to do your pockets. Now, if you want to have even larger pocket and maybe flip this over a little bit, you can adjust your pocket that way as well. Maybe put a little button. It really depends how much room you want. I like big pockets because my phone is big and I always stick my phone in there. But decorate this up. This is another great place to add embroidery, by the way, in case you've been following along with that. Okay. So, <laughs> yes, I know I have to, those were not Kai Pinkin shears, but I definitely need a pair because those were very, very. Oh, Arnell, the back on, well, we better go. We better go. So any questions on that, by the way? <laughs> Patricia, you're holding your tongue just right to get the signal to be here. Well, it's so nice to see you all. So for those of you that missed the beginning, again, here it is. This is the new event. If you're going to be, if you're in California, January 13th to 15th, I will be teaching hands-on classes there, hosting a fashion show that you definitely won't want to miss. And we're talking about a special VIP as well for that. And um, for those of you that like classes in the Fashion Sewing Club, I have listed my fall classes for in my studio. There are three, pants fitting, jacket fitting, and a knit top, one way, many ways. So you're going to make a lot of knit tops during that week. Uh, Fashion Sewing Club gets first dips, and then I open it up to everyone. But in the meantime, for those of you that want to hang out with embroidery, meet me over at Sewing Machines Plus Facebook or YouTube page. Otherwise, I will see you guys soon. Now, I will be sending a newsletter out this afternoon because I have a few more things for you. So if you would like to sign up for the newsletter, you can go here. And if you don't get the newsletter by tomorrow, make sure, if you want to know if you've actually signed up, just go to Angela Wolf, scroll down on the right-hand side, Sign up for the newsletter. If you're already in there, it'll say you're already in there. So if you just want to make sure I've got a coupon going out, a few other special announcements, of course. And there's some info on the Fashion Sewing Club, too, if you'd like. Bye, Sharon. Enjoy your time. Um, will it be virtual? You know, I don't, Patty, I don't know. I don't think so, because I think that this one's going to be all in person, from what I understand but I'll keep you posted. All right, Donna, see you over there in just a second. <laughs> Dulia, I'm in. Excellent. Great to see you, Esther. And I'll, I know there's a delay, so I'll just make sure there aren't any last minute questions. If you all know that last week I was just dying laughing because I did have a very busy weekend, but it sure was a lot of fun. Absolutely. All right, everyone. We'll go back over. Meet you back over at uh, Soy Machines Plus. Have a great day. Oh, someone just said, how do I get there? See over there, Glenda. I have a link right below this. So as soon as I'm not live, you'll be able to see that. Just go to soymachinesplus.com and you can go right to the live show. I will see you there soon. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a great day and have a great week.